Okay, the trim video. This is one of the biggest things people screw up and mess up. These are trims. So, is that up or down? Down. Bah, you had a 50-50 anyway. <laughs> That's trims up. So if you look at the top of the risers, notice that these Malons right here, let's just pull the lines up. Malons are not level. See how they are going up in the back. That's trims up. You've raised the rear of the glider, lowering your angle of attack. Trims up. If you pull it down, all the trims are level. And bingo. Malons are all level, basically, if I pull them out. Maybe so, that's a triangle. Triangle. yeah, these are the Malons right here. Now, I mean, if I pull, that's a little tension, but they'll all be perfectly level at trim speed. So, almost every glider is like this. There are a few that have Malons at different heights, which are kind of weird. Um, like uh, the U-turn glider, the Bs are high, so you can pull a B-line stall, which is kind of useless and worthless, but it, so it's not 100%, but m the vast, probably 99% of the gliders out there, if your Malons are level, you are trims down. So trims up, boom, you press the button, you slide the buckle all the way out. That is trims up. Now the rear of the glider, the back Malons are up. You've just raised your angle of attack. Now, the, excuse me, lowered your angle of attack because you've raised the rear of the glider, raised the rear of the glider, lowering your angle of attack. This is no small thing. It's very important to know, understand. Now we've all been kiting trims up, which is very important. Why? Because pulling the trims down does exactly the same thing as pulling five inches of brake. In light winds, what happens if you pull five inches of brake and hold it? Glider stalls. So it's much easier for the glider to stall. Also, it creates more drag and it's dragging you. If you pull five inches of brake, you're getting drug. So we put the trims up so you, you can choose how much drag. If you wanna get drug, you just pull five inches of brake or pull eight inches of brake and hold it. You can cancel trims with brake. So if I put the trims up five inches and I pull five inches of brake, I'm right back to trim speed. Bam. The, uh, but if your trims are down, you cannot let your hands up to lower that angle of attack. So by putting the trims up, you have the full range of uh, speed at your fingertips on the brakes. You just have to use it. Uh, you also launch trims up, which is very important um, because Again, the last thing you want to happen is to stall the glider right behind you at low speed when you're just trying to get turned around and get going. So trims down, the glider would be exponentially more likely to stall. And if it stalled, you couldn't do jack squat about it because you can't put your hands up that extra five inches. And so if it stalled, you'd be much less likely to recover it. Trims up, you could be a lot more likely to recover it and it'll be a lot less likely to stall. Yes, Jim. Landing the same way, trims up. What? Landing the same way, trims up. Okay, landing, we don't need the extra speed. When you're coming into landing, your glider's fully loaded. You're already at speed, so there's no chance of really stalling it. Um, because once it's at speed and you're hanging from it, you can bury the brakes on a dominator. It's extremely stall and spin resistant. So preferably when you come into land, you want the safety of the higher angle of attack. So you would pull trims down. All the way? All the way. For landing. For landing and flying. So basically when you go flying on your own, you would take off trims up just like we do at the class. But immediately once you're up in the air and you're good and everything's good, boom, both trims come back down. So that you're flying around at your safest configuration, which is you grab this with one finger and pull. Bam, trims all the way back down. Dominator's coolest glider ever. I mean, unless you've flown total crap gliders like Ozone and Gin and all these other gliders, you don't realize how cool what I just did was. I mean, one finger, boom, one movement. I went from trims up to trims down, just that simple. So it's very, very easy with a Dominator. It's a very cool design. 
um, how that works. Very, what very do I nice. Do with mine? With the Say what? What do I do with mine, with this one? Yours, same sort of thing, but you're not gonna fly yours. <laughs> yours has what we call super cruise risers. Boo yeah. Um, okay, now let me explain speed bar. Check out speed bar. Whoop. Here we go, let's try it this way. So speed bar is this little pulley which would hook to a bar. Now, check out your risers. So look at your main lines. Notice again, exactly like trims up, see the rear main lines are higher than the fronts. So it does exactly the same thing as trim in reverse. It pulls down the front of the glider, lowering the angle of attack, where the trims raises the rear, does the exact same thing, but in reverse. So if you push full speed bar, lowers the angle of attack, accelerates the glider. The only pain in the butt is you have to hold the freaking speed bar. Nobody wants to fly for an hour doing a leg press holding a speed bar, it's retarded. So the trims are really cool because you can let the trims all the way up. Well, super cruise risers are very, very cool because all of the trim is in the trim buckle. It doesn't have a speed bar. It makes the trim over twice as long so that when you put the trims all the way up, you get full acceleration of the glider. Very, very cool for a super advanced pilot who knows how to use that. But if you are a moron, you are locked at full speed bar. So if you were to take a collapse, you can't let off the speed bar and have the glider return to trim speed. So the safety is not as good unless you know how to use it uh, and use it correctly. But it's very, very cool because you can fully accelerate the glider and it'll stay there. You don't have to hold a leg press. But we would not sell those to anybody, anybody very, very advanced pilot that knows what you're doing. Because if you're a moron and you go let super cruise risers all the way out, you're at the very lowest angle of attack, more than twice what the trims would do by themselves. So watch the deflection here. If I put the trims up and hold speed bar, now you can see that the Malons are twice as high. So you're really lowering the angle of attack, basically as far as is really decently safe for that glider. It's still pretty freaking stable because it's a Dominator and still pretty safe but locked at full speed bar, it's gonna be much more likely to collapse. And if it does collapse locked at full speed bar, it's gonna be a bit more of an adventure. <laughs> As Trevor can tell you, if you take a collapse on a 5XS 14 square meter at full speed bar, it gets gives you quite a ride. Like the Tyler ride. Woo -woo -woo -woo! But what you do for an advanced pilot, you would just add 10 inches of brake and hold it and immediately cancel trim so that the glider recovers at trim speed. But you gotta know what you're doing to be screwing around with that. So the, uh, we don't ever really use speed bar cause it's more a pain in the butt. The cool thing is, is how do you get more speed? Well, if you fly a bigger glider to accelerate, you can drastically lower the angle of attack like that. But we just talked about the safety issues. So the smarter way to do it is to just get a smaller glider. You get a smaller glider, you can get the same speed or even more, but at a higher angle of attack with more wing loading. So the glider is more stable and safer and faster. So it's like you get all the benefits where if you were flying a medium full speed bar, you're not really gonna keep up with a 5XS with just trims and the 5XS would be drastically less likely to collapse. So it's better to have the smaller glider at a higher angle of attack than fly a bigger glider at a much lower angle of attack. So big, big difference. So that's trims, that's speed bar, and what it's doing is lowering the angle of attack to the glider, but with a piece of cloth, the lower you get that angle of attack, the more likely it is to tuck under and collapse. And so you need to know what you're doing if you're lowering that angle of attack. Uh, any questions on that? I got a Here question. Go. On those Super Cruise risers, um, pulling them down halfway, would that would cancel out that extra six inches and put me back at neutral? No. The, but almost. You're almost correct. Pulling it halfway down or a little over halfway would be like trims only, no speed bar. Okay. 
So all the way up is like speed bar and trims on these risers okay. for the Super Cruise. If you put it down a little past halfway down, okay. it would be like trims up. And if you put it all the way down, you're right back to trim speed. Okay. So as long as the trims are all the way down on Super Cruise, you're totally fine. Yep. But if you're a moron yep. and you go out and you go flying around and don't even know what trims are and you lock them wide open. Yep. So if you're one of the advanced pilots that we would sell them to, you also have to be very careful that you don't resell that glider to a moron <laughs> because then they have a glider that they don't know what they're doing with. So we don't, we don't really sell those to people that unless they're really, really good and know exactly what that is and how to use them. So for us, so. we'll just do trims up, take off, trims down, fly, and not worry about speed bar or anything else. You got it. That's the way to do it. And here at the class, once we get fly, we're gonna try and work you down to the smallest size of glider so we can give you the biggest margin of error. So if you do get hit with higher winds, you'll be able to have a glider size that'll deal with it. But again, it depends on skill level because to get down to the smaller sizes, you need to be able to control oscillation perfectly because it's very sporty and fun um, and it's faster. So you need to be able to control and deal with the speeds and have perfect launches and landings. Because if you mess up a landing on an extra large, well, you're not going that fast. It's not that big of a deal. You mess up a landing on an extra, 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 extra small and you just, it's not gonna be pretty because you're landing at a much higher speed. So we make sure you know what you're doing and we graduate you size after size as your skills progress. Now, one other thing that's interesting is that with the main lines like this, if you add brake, you're right back to where you started. So notice this is the brake pulley right here. Well, it's on the back riser. So if you accelerate the full speed bar, and you let the back riser up eight inches, your brake went up eight inches. So your hands went up eight inches. That means if you came in and landed and you buried your brake for a flare, you're exactly the same as trims up or trims down. So it doesn't matter technically if you land trims up or trims down, because when you flare, you're gonna end up exactly in the same spot because your brakes are all the way buried. And so the brakes went up, and so you just pulled more brake by the time you got done to it. You just came in faster, so there's no real reason to land trims up. Um, but if you did, it's no big deal. Because all of you, actually, when we're doing touch and goes, we're actually gonna have you leave the trims up the whole time, and you'll be landing with the trims up. That's because we're not having you land. We're going for touch and goes immediately. And so you're gonna have to then regain control of the glider and then make another launch all without stalling it. And so we're gonna have you land trims up, but you're not really gonna notice uh, because when you flare, you're gonna end up at the same speed as you would have trims down. Um, but it also kind of simulates uh, three glider sizes bigger because trims up is about six miles an hour. So if you're flying a medium trims up, that's like a small, extra small, extra, extra small. So you're coming in at the speed of an extra, extra small trims down. And so you're kind of helping push yourself to the next level on speed and understanding, uh, but while maintaining a bigger glider size. So there's lots really? of little so cool things about, we do. About, uh, so it's an average of about two wing sizes on that? Three. Oh, three, okay. Three, each glider size is about two miles an hour to three miles an hour of speed. So trims up trims down is two three glider sizes approximately depends on the glider depends on the pilot but in there somewhere yeah so kind of cool but any other questions because this is confusing stuff so if you have questions don't hesitate to ask yes sir andy sorry when you're flying trims down when would you put them back up what what situations would would you run into where you would kind of need to put them back up Okay, so the reason you'd use trims in flight is to accelerate the glider. So let's say we wanted to go flying together and fly 30 miles down the beach. Well, once we got up a couple hundred feet, no problem putting the trims back up, losing a little stability to gain our extra speed so that we can make the trip. Then once we got where we're going, pull the trims down and then come down and go screw around. If you're gonna be screwing around down low, you know, trims back down. Also another big thing, never, ever, ever do maneuvers, trims up. If you wanna go screwing around and yanking, and banking and looping and doing wing overs, trims down because 
doing those things, you're much more likely to take a collapse with the trims up. So never ever do maneuvers with your trims up. There's just no real reason to do that. What about trims up will, will penetrate better though, right? Like let's say you run into a situation where you've been hammering downwind and then you turn around to the side to go home and realize that your ground speed is pretty much nil. That is correct. If you want to speed up six miles an hour, then you would put trims up. If you have smooth air and you got the altitude, so you kind of think about it because you're sacrificing some stability so you're a little more likely to take a collapse although a dominator is pretty ridiculous uh, trims up or down but yeah if you got some wind and you need to accelerate boom that's what the trims are for it's it's like shifting to third gear <laughs> you know if you want to speed up shift into third gear so that can balance you a little bit if you're with somebody that's got a medium and i'm on a 2x and he wants to try to catch up to me he can simply he can, correct smooth, he can come up which would give him a little more equal speed yeah normally when i'm flying i would either go trims all the way up for launch or trims all the way down it's either one or the other about the only time i use partial trim is to match someone else so if somebody else is a little bit faster than me I just trim up like a little bit at a time until we're both the same speed and it makes it fun to fly with each other when you're exactly the same speed. So the trims will allow you to match the other guy's speed. Yeah, I flew um, with Steve up north and he has a medium and I have a 2X so I'm thinking I'm just gonna buzz all around him but what I didn't take in consideration was the loading, at, I'm 140, he's 200. Yes. So all of a sudden it wasn't that way. We were actually, he was going a little faster than me and I'm on a 2X and he's on a medium. I just adjusted a little bit, we ended up just... Yeah. It works really nice. Every 10 pounds is about one mile an hour. Oh, perfect. That's so cool. if you add, and the Dominator is the ultimate for turning uh, a weight into speed directly, which is the reason I set the world speed record on it, because it you add weight, it goes faster. A lot of gliders just turn that weight into drag, and they don't really accelerate that much. They just create an enormous amount of drag and then you run out of power. So the, uh, yeah. If, so if, if you ate a lot. If you're really, 140. Really fat, and you might be able to break your speed record. You got it. <laughs> you you got it. it. <laughs> or if, if like Tyler got wise, see, he could yes. go out and break my speed record. Do it. You're right. You got it. But yeah, if you're 140 and another guy's 200, <laughs> that's 60 <laughs> pounds. Yeah. He's going to naturally be about six miles an hour faster than that's you. That's what it about felt like. He was sort of pulling away from me the whole, you know. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and then you compensate glider sizes, two mile an hour per size, approximately. Yeah. And so you just trims up a little I just bit. A little bit, and I sort of watch, and I slowly. Yep. Could sound, see that I was moving up a little bit with him. Yeah. Him, I just pulled a little bit, and I, we sort of just trimmed right out. We were just right beside each other. Bingo. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah, it was cool. Did I answer your question, Andy? Yep. I got that. Any other questions on that? Because that's a really confusing, that's a big one people screw up is the trims. So when we, when we start doing it, we'll have trims up and we're doing touch and goes the whole time. We don't have to bother doing it. Correct. You're not even going to have to touch the trims. We're just going to leave them wide open because we know you're going back into landing. Also, you're in a very controlled environment under my direct supervision. And so it's not like you're out in a field in Wyoming, you know, and you don't know what's going to happen. Here we'll have you in wind from the beach generally or smoother air for your first flights. And so there's very little risk doing that in a controlled environment under my supervision. But when you get back home, don't be doing that if you see what I'm saying. So trims down when you get up.